Hello everyone, hope you are all safe. In this video, we are going to discuss a very interesting topic. You all must have heard of stem cells. Have you ever heard of using stem cells in regeneration of dental pulp? Treatments that promote the body to regrow its own tissues and organs are known broadly as regenerative medicine. So, there is significant interest in figuring out how to use this knowledge to help people with cavities or any disease that would lead to tooth loss. And that's how it's giving them the chance to keep their natural teeth. Now let's discuss the question you're probably asking yourself. What if the missing parts of teeth are replaceable? Let's get into details of our subject. You might be wondering if stem cells are the only cells in human body that can regenerate and cause self renewal. The answer is no. Actually, another type of cells in human body can regenerate, which are mesenchymal stem cells. So let's talk about each type. First of all, stem cells are defined as a special group of clonogenic cells. Clonogenic means cells that can reproduce copies of themselves can divide clonogenic word into clone and genic clone means an organism or cell or group of cells or organisms produced from one ancestor or stock and these cells have the ability for self-renewal and differentiation which means they are responsible for normal tissue healing and regeneration after injuries so you might be wondering where these cells could be found. Actually, these cells are present in blood vessels, bone marrow, brain, peripheral blood, skeletal tissues, teeth, guts, livers, heart, and ovarian epithelium tissue. Now let's move on to our next type of cells that can regenerate, mesenchymal stem cells. These cells are quite limited more than stem cells. We can find them in many tissues throughout the body. They have the capacity to differentiate into bone, cartilage, tendon, fat, and muscle. Furthermore, these cells are considered immunoregulatory cells, which is a very important function because they can sense and control inflammation in injured tissues. Also, scientists isolated and characterized different types of mesenchymal stem cells from the oral and maxillofacial regions. The aim of this review is to describe new findings in dental stem cell research, plus their potential applications in tissue regeneration and treatment of inflammatory related diseases. And most importantly, we want to know what mesenchymal stem cells can do in dental pulp. So mesenchymal stem cells have been isolated from dental pulp tissue of permanent human teeth and those cells are referred to as dental pulp stem cells it refers to their ability of renewal and differentiation into osteoplasts adipocytes neural cells and odontoplasts scientists have been trying their best to make advances in treating tooth decay and restoring tooth tissue considering avoiding painful dental procedures, which are the main fear of most of patients. So several recent studies have demonstrated in animal shows that procedures involving tooth stem cells appear to regrow the critical living tooth tissues known as bulb. Using stem cells derived from dental pulp, which are known as dental pulp derived stem cells. So let's talk more about these cells. These cells are found in the soft connective tissue in the center of each tooth. They can be extracted from milk teeth and healthy adult wisdom teeth. Those cells fulfill the criteria of stem cells and different types of them have been isolated from oral and maxillofacial regions. As we know, clinically, when we face a tooth that has been diagnosed with irreversible pulpitis, which is inflammation of dental pulp, the available bulb is considered inflamed and infected. Therefore, it is removed 
even though some portion of the bulb is still viable. And this viable portion contains viable cells with the potential of ex vivo expansion and proliferation. So this inflamed bulb which contains preserved stem cells can be considered a suitable source for dental bulb derived stem cells for dental bulb regeneration and not anymore a discarded biological waste. And that's how stem cells in general and dental bulb derived stem cells specifically give us all hope for treating dental bulb painlessly and without wasting any viable tissue. Let's get into details of what scientists have done to experiment the ability of dental bulb derived stem cells in regenerating dental bulb. First of all, human dental bulb derived stem cells were isolated from third molars and expanded in standard culture conditions containing human serum or fatal bovin serum. And after their characterization and evaluation, Cells were seeded in tooth slice and implanted subcutaneously into immunodeficient mice. After 30 days, tooth slice were retrieved and evaluated for dental pulp tissue regeneration. And to evaluate the tooth immunohistochemistry and cone focal microscopy were used to quantify blood vessels formation and evaluate bredentine and dentine formation, which are the main constituents of the tooth. As a result of what scientists have done, we have found that pulp-derived stem cells cultured in human serum produced concentrations of angiogenic growth factors equivalent to dental pulp-derived stem cells which are cultured in fetal bovine serum. Angiogenic growth factors here mean factors that help growth of blood vessels. Actually also, dental pulp derived stem cells cultured in human serum showed several angiogenic factors produced in at least one fold higher concentrations than cells cultured in fetal bovine serum. That was noticed in in vitro research. But on the other side, in vivo, it was determined that dental bulb derived stem cells cultured in human serum produced a robust angiogenic response and regeneration of dentine equivalent to dental bulb derived stem cells, which are cultured in fetal bovine serum. At the end, these findings show that dental bulb derived stem cells can be isolated and expanded to clinical scale numbers in media devoid of animal serum or exogenous growth factors and still maintain their bulb regenerative properties. Actually, the implications of these findings are significant for further development of clinical protocols using dental pulp drive stem cells and cell therapy. So all of what we have talked about leads us to this question. Do you think that in near future, we will be able to see the missing parts of the teeth grow again? Thank you for watching and we hope